This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. There was a certain man who was sitting out on a park bench one day. He was deep in contemplation, but with an expression of sadness and depression on his face. A friend of his came walking by and said, Why do you look so unhappy? Why so discouraged? What is it you're thinking about? And the unhappy man replied, My future. Well, his friend said, What makes it seem so hopeless? And the man replied, my past. And that may be what depresses you as well. You may have convinced yourself that your life cannot be any better tomorrow than it was yesterday and that it is today. And yet the truth of the matter is that life can change for you because you yourself can change. You need not remain as you always have been. You can drink deeply from the source springs of the Spirit in prayer and meditation and worship and discover a new power and a new joy in the living of your life. You'll never really know what it is to live until you know what it is to live as you were born to live. I mean to live in faith and hope and love as the son or daughter of God you were born and created to be. It all begins with faith. And once you begin to live your life in fervent faith with spiritual spunk, with a new godly gumption, you will begin to live in joy and purpose and in power. But how do you do this? How do you go about it? How do you begin? One major secret in spiritual growth is to begin to associate yourself increasingly with others who also share that purpose. U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, in a letter to his sons, wrote, Remember this always, there are two classes of boys, good and bad. If you choose your companions among the good boys, you need not worry whether they're rich or poor or who their fathers and mothers are. When he was a boy, George Washington wrote in a book of maxims, Associate yourself with men of good quality if you esteem your reputation, for it is better to be alone than in bad company. Choose wisely your companions, William E. Gladstone, Prime Minister of England, cautioned a group of young men. For a young man's companions, more than his food or his clothes, his home or his parents, will make him what he is to become. An old adage says, tell me whom you are with, and I will tell you what you are. Learn to love others who also love God. And you shall begin your ascent toward the heights of spiritual experience. Years ago, there was a group of people climbing up the Alps. But when two of them decided they wanted to go higher than the rest of the party, they fell and they were lost forever. But their friends put these words on their marker. When last seen, they were headed toward the heights. And an epitaph of a Swiss mountaineer reads in three words, He died climbing. Action, purpose, commitment, exertion. Give your life to God and then get active because God has a will for the living of your life. Keep climbing, aspiring, working for God's will and seek out others of like spirituality. A man one time went into a store and asked the clerk for a compass. Said he wanted to buy a compass. The clerk said, which kind do you want? The kind of compass you draw circles with or the kind you go places with? Is your life going in circles? Or do you have a great and mighty goal which galvanizes your energy, your purposes, your mind, your thinking, your every action and reaction? God has a will for you which, regardless of your age, can begin to invigorate and energize the living of your life beginning here and now. Sir Winston Churchill, whose marvelous gifts of oratory rallied his nation when invasion threatened England, in his autobiography written in 1930 titled My Early Life, he expresses his regret that he did not have a university training, but that regret, he said, was tempered by his observation of how so many college people wasted their time. And he wrote, quote, I now pity undergraduates when I see what frivolous lives many of them lead in the midst of precious and fleeting opportunity. After all, a man's life must be nailed to a cross either of thought or of action, and without work there is no play. Those are the words of Winston Churchill. There is a proverb, there is no happiness without intelligent effort. There is joy in finding the work, the labor, the purpose for which God created you. Dr. Clarence McCartney wrote some years before his death, I was driving across Chicago with William Jennings Bryan, and on our way we passed near the Coliseum where he had delivered the great speech of 1896, the speech which made him three times the candidate of his party for the presidency, and which concluded with his famous peroration, You shall not press down upon the brow of labor this crown of thorn. You shall not crucify mankind upon a cross of gold. And I said to him, Mr. Bryan, 
I suppose that many times before that you had made speeches just as good and effective as that, but those speeches were never heard. And he replied, yes, I suppose that's true. But that convention was my opportunity, and I made the most of it. And then he was silent for a moment as his great head rested back against the cushion of the taxi, and the light of reminiscence and retrospection shone in his eyes. And after a moment, he broke the silence with these words. That's about all that we do in this life. Either lose or use our opportunity. And that is your choice this moment. To claim or to lose your opportunity. To decide in this instant, this clock tick, this beating of your heart, this pulsing at your wrist, this instant, your choice is to use or to lose this point for the beginning of a new commitment to the will of God and spiritual growth for you. Deep in the heart of Texas, there was a rancher who was brought to the hospital desperately ill, and for days he lay in a coma. But then one morning, he revived a little bit, and he looked over to a nurse and asked what time of the year it was. The nurse replied, well, it's springtime. And the old rancher said, springtime? He said, I can't die now. It's plowing time. Make use of your plowing time upon this earth. God has a work for you to do, and the satisfaction and the joy which can only come of putting your time and your energy to the purposes of God for your life. At 32 years of age, the composer of hymns, William Cowper, passed through a great crisis in his life. He tried to commit suicide. He attempted to end his life by taking poison, but failed. Then he hired a coach and instructed the driver to take him to the Thames River, intending to throw himself into the river and drown himself. But again, some power seemed to restrain him at the last moment. The next morning, still depressed in utter despondency, he held a knife to his heart and threw himself down upon the floor, upon the knife, but the blade broke in two, and again his life was saved. The next day he tried to hang himself, but he was cut down unconscious from the beam, but still alive, still with a heartbeat. One morning a few days later, in a moment of openness spiritually in his heart, he reached and took his Bible, and he read a verse from the letter to the Romans, and in a moment he received in the twinkling of an eye the strength to begin to believe, and he began to rejoice in the forgiving power of God. And some years later, after he had passed through a rich spiritual experience in his life and had written many beautiful hymns, William Cowper sat down one morning and summed up his faith in God's dealings with him and with other people he had known in this great hymn of God's grace. Listen to these words from a man who again and again and again had attempted to take his own life. He wrote these words, God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. God has a sovereign will for the living of your life as well. And if you will commit your life to that in faith, all things will begin to be transformed for you and you will begin to live eternal life, not at some distant day of your death, but you'll begin to live by eternal values and live eternal life beginning right here, right now, this very instant. Someone has written, you are beaten to the earth. Well, what is that? come up with a smiling face. It's nothing against you to fall down flat, but to lie there. That's the disgrace. God will give you the power to get up and get going and get moving in your life again, rather than lying in defeat and sadness and despondency. God has a power and a will and a love for you which can stir your soul to new aspiration and new ideals. The great Indian philosopher Tagore wrote, God the great giver can open the whole universe to your gaze in the narrow space of a single love. The author of the Battle Hymn of the Republic, Harriet Beecher Stowe, wrote, When you get into a tight place and everything goes against you till it seems as though you could not hold on for one minute longer, never give up then, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. Commit your life wholeheartedly, unreservedly, without any footnotes or asterisks, without holding anything back. Be willing to go anywhere, do anything, and be anything the living God would have you go and do and be. And beginning this instant, if that be your decision, 
all things will become as new to you. Let it be your will to do the will of God. Let it be your purpose to find God's purpose. Let it be your decision to decide for God. Let it be your choice to ask God's choice. And let it be your way to seek God's way. And a transformation wondrous and astonishing to behold shall begin in your life this moment, this instant, right here and now. These are the richest topics in all the history of human thought, in all of philosophy. Cling to these, study these things, and if you want to read more about these, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. Our mailing address is Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, because I've written on these subjects, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, growing spiritually. How can you get that spiritual growth going so that it's satisfying? You know every day is going to be better spiritually than the one before because you're aspiring for the will of God. Growing spiritually is the title of that. We have one titled Life After Death, which I've written, and Seven Principles of Prayer, all sorts of topics. Just write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. Ask for the free literature. No cost, no charge, no obligation. No one's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. This is free when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell this mailing address, Box 3080. 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute for the Free Literature. Write to us. We want to hear from you. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.